In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, lead us to a share in the joys of heaven, so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul and Barnabas carried on from Perga till they reached Antioch in Presidia. Here they went to the synagogue on the Sabbath and took their seats. When the meeting broke up, many Jews and devout converts joined Paul and Barnabas, and in their talks with them, Paul and Barnabas urged them to remain faithful to the grace God had given them. At the next Sabbath, almost the whole town assembled to hear the word of God. When they saw the crowds, the Jews, promoted by jealousy, used blasphemies and contradicted everything Paul said. Then Paul and Barnabas spoke out boldly, we have to proclaim the word of God to you first. But since you have rejected it, since you do not think yourselves worthy of eternal life, we must turn to the pagans. For this is what God commanded us to do when he said, I have made you a light for the nations, so that my salvation may reach the ends of the earth. It made the pagans very happy to hear this, and they thanked the Lord for his message. All who were destined for eternal life became believers. Thus, the word of the Lord spread through the whole countryside. But the Jews worked upon some devout women of the upper class and the leading men of the city and persuaded them to, gern, to turn against Paul and Barnabas and expel them from the ter their territory. So they shook the dust from their feet in defiance and went off to Anico. But, but the disciples were filled with joy in the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the book of the Apocalypse. I, John, saw a huge number, impossible to count. People from every nation, race, tribe, and language. They were standing in front of the throne, in front of the Lamb, dressed in white robes and holding palms in their hands. One of the elders said to me, These are the people who have been through the great persecution. And because they have washed their robes white again in the blood of the Lamb, they will stand in front of God's throne and serve him day and night in his sanctuary. And the one who sits on the throne will sp spread his tent over them. They will never hunger or thirst again. Neither the sun nor scorching wind will plague them. Because the lamb who is at the throne will be their shepherd and will lead them to springs of living water. And God will wipe away all tears from their eyes. The word of the Lord. the good shepherd, says the Lord. I know my own sheep, and my own know me. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, The sheep that belong to me listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life. They will never be lost, and no one will ever steal them from me. The Father who gave them to me is greater than anyone, and no one can steal from the Father. The Father and I are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear brothers and sisters, uh, a very short Gospel passage, but certainly packed with detail, and on this Good Shepherd Sunday, the passage clearly presents the Lord as a good shepherd. And as the psalm just stated, we are his people, the sheep of his flock. And I just want to focus on the opening line of the gospel passage. The sheep that belong to me, listen to my voice. The voice is a very powerful tool because voices make impacts upon us. A voice has a tonality, a texture, and a resonance. Even in music, we say an instrument has a voice. And there's an old saying which runs, a voice can melt the heart. Voices express opinions that can influence, educate, even brainwash. And the voice can be used to initiate change. In today's world, there is a conglomeration of a cacophony of voices trying to guide or influence whether it comes from advertising or social media. You and me can wander away from the Good Shepherd's voice, lured by other voices, that we think will fulfill us and make us happier. And what we see and hear in the media can shape and mould our attitudes and influence us as to how and what we think. The voice of hyper-partisan politics calls on us to serve our own interests alone. 
But the loving voice of Jesus calls us to serve the interests of others. The voice of hyper-partisan politics disciples us to be motivated by fear and anger and that everything and everyone is a threat. But the loving voice of Jesus calls us to love our neighbour and convinces us that everyone, no matter who they are, is made in the image of God. We are reminded in Psalm 95 in an exhortation to obedience and worship that, oh, that today you would listen to his voice, harden not your hearts. So how do we hear Jesus' voice today? St. Paul tells us that faith comes from hearing. Faith comes from hearing. We, 2,000 years later, hear Jesus' voice when we hear the scriptures proclaimed at Mass. And this is the living voice of the church. But we can also hear Jesus' voice in our own personal consciences. Our voice of conscience provides us with a sense of morality or even a sense of duty or even vocation. Conscience is an essential part of our understanding of what kind of person we are or what kind of person we strive to be. To believe that Christ is alive and fully working in the world today requires all of us to pay attention to the voice that speaks within our own hearts. And the Catechism speaks of the ancient Semitic notion of the heart as the place to which I withdraw, hearing God in the silence. The sheep that belong to me listen to my voice. The message for us is very clear. Jesus tells us here that we will have eternal life, that we will never be lost. We must follow Jesus to death, but like him, enter into new life. And let us not forget those glorifying words of St. Paul in his letter to the Colossians that Christ is your life and you too will be revealed in all your glory with him. And finally, we pray on this vocations Sunday that the voice of the Lord will be heard by men and women so that they will devote themselves to the continuing mission and ministry of the church. We stand to proclaim our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen.
we turn to the Lord, our true and loving shepherd, and place our prayers before him. In today's gospel, Jesus tells us that sheep belong to him, listen to his voice. We pray that in our daily lives, we will never far from his message of love and forgiveness so that we can reap the reward of eternal life, which he so clearly promises. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. On this vocation Sunday, we pray that the Lord inspire and enlighten his people so that they will never want for witness, both lay and ordained, who will preach and live his gospel. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for all of those in our church, men and women, ordained and lay, who have been called to the role of shepherd, that they may follow closely the example of Christ and bear witness to his goodness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all our volunteers who assist in our church, ministers of the Eucharist and of the Word, our choir, collectors, cleaners, and the flower team, and thank them for their continuing service to our church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We remember all who dedicate their lives in the cause of justice and human rights, at home and abroad, that they be supported by our prayers in times of danger. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray today that war may end and peace spread throughout the world. We pray especially for the people of Ukraine, that the Lord protect them from the aggressor and grant them the peace and safety in their homes, which all God's children so richly deserve. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for all who have died, the recently deceased, Patrick Cullen of England, late of the Tandrigay Road, Kathleen Brown, Fanula McVeigh, Sheila Harney, Maura McGill, May Quinn, Danny Neeson, and Kathleen Gilpin of Lurgan. At this time, we remember James McSeaver, Liam White, Cabrera da Costa and Sarmento families, Quintao and Rodriguez families. Today is the month's mind of Bridie McCrory, the first anniversary of Bartholomeo Vaz, and the anniversaries of Patricia Mulligan, Kitty McAlinden, Felipe Pereira, Joaquin Martins da Costa, and Matthias Gammon. Sunday, the first anniversary of John McAlinden, and the anniversaries of John Duffy, Joan Farnan, Robert Hamill, John McCann, Mary McCann, Anthony McGuigan, Cardinal Tommaso Fee, Margaret Hamill, Maria Liberata, Marquita Correa, Lucia Freitas, Josephine and Stephen Murphy, Noel and Marie Kim McGuire, Philosmino Maya, Maria Vong, Aurelia Suarez, Jose Oliveira, Maria Ataide, and Francisco Xavier, and Orlando Victor. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Let us pray. Loving Father, Good Shepherd, you who lead us through the darkness to the light, we ask that you have mercy on us and hear these prayers which we humbly make through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, the universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, 
together with Francis, our Pope, and Eamon, our Bishop, his assistant, Bishop Michael, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, our venerable spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be almost free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Just a few notices. Last week's collection amounted to £2,532.93p, and the standing the standing order amount for the month nine hundred and seven pounds and thank you to all who contributed now uh, during the coming week we have celebrations of confirmation here uh, in st john the baptist on monday and uh, on thursday for ballyorn school and there's also first holy communion um, next saturday so the, the weekday Masses will be Monday with, at 10 a.m. with the Novena Prayers. Tuesday, uh, both 10 a.m. St. Patrick's, 7 p.m. here. Wednesday, the same, 10 a.m. St. Patrick's, 7 p.m. here. On Thursday, St. Patrick's, 10 a.m. on its own. On Friday, 10 a.m. St. Patrick's, 7 p.m. St. John the Baptist with no morning mass on Saturday. Uh, so there'll be no confessions and midday confessions next Saturday either. That's on account of the First Communions and Confirmations. More in the bulletin if you care to look. And I'd like to conclude by thanking Eunan for his help and his wonderful homily here this evening. The readers from St. John the Baptist College who are excellent and our choir, lovely. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Amen.